Oh yeah, we got we got some late night math here. Wow, that that's been a while since on a Sunday night like doing some math. But you know, like why not, right? I mean, hi, Landon. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thinking your time's on let it do from your friendly secular astronomer. And uh, yes, this is like uh, maybe you know hacking back to the days of of homework. But even if it's not homework. Uh, uh, Steve and I are hope to have a conversation about polynomials, and if nothing else, convince you why you should care about polynomials or why they are uh, interesting little uh, things. Yeah, so, I don't miss so. the days on Sunday nights where I had like school, you know, Monday morning, and it was I was like studying for a last minute math test or something like that. That's this is kind of what it reminds me of, kind of reviewing <laughs> this particular topic. And I'm like, oh man, it's Sunday night. Yeah, I got a test on Monday morning. I got to cram to make sure I know how to do quadratics right or polynomials or whatever the test is I yeah. didn't study for in high school because I wasn't really a big study. Or <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, I tell I, you what, you know, what, what, they, what folks can do instead of being tested they can test us. Like if we make a mistake, call us out, and and we'll correct ourselves. So so see if you can uh, check out. Uh, see if you see if you know all this stuff. Um, have us uh, make sure that we're not uh, straying. Well, yeah, that's one of the that's one of the funniest things my audience likes to do. So all the math people out there that will be watching, which it's it's late. It's it's seven my time. It's it's 10 Eastern, and so I don't expect a lot of people to be watching math tonight. But you know what? We do it for fun. And, and there's relaxing. recordings, too. People might watch the recording later. And, yeah. and besides, you know, as I say, it, it, so, so we will do our, we'll do our, our best and, uh, and say, you know, talk about. So polynomials, right? Um, uh, you've uh, dealt with polynomials a lot uh, in, in your career. I have a share of them. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, the, the name polynomial uh, actually is kind of a combined uh, Greek and, and Latin root. I mean, the, the, the word poly means many. And, and, and gnome in Latin is, is, is name. So, so um, the, the, they used to have things like you know, binomials, which was sort of a, a, a two-part uh, name equation. But the but the notion of polynomial came about around the 17th century. Um, other than thing with Descartes, and so forth, talking about graphing, and so forth, for that that name became became popular. Now, now are binomials considered polynomials? Yeah, I mean, they, they should be a of, subset of polynomials, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. Obviously, so, so so that's where or that it was derived from that term binomial. Yeah. Right? Generally, a, though, if if you use polynomial, it's, it's probably going to have multiple uh, independent variables. So, sure. but if he's, but any type of uh, linear formula that has even a single independent variable uh, would be, well, I mean, any one that two or more would be a polynomial, right? So binomial still yeah. would be considered a polynomial because there's two independent variables. Yeah, and so so one of the things that you would say, and, and in fact, if 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 this if this uh, the Wikipedia article on polynomial was actually actually pretty good, and and I would encourage people to go and take a look at the article there. There's some terms and things that clicks you things you can click on to 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 explore some stuff, and we'll be using that. I, I assume you can both can yeah. see this. Yeah, uh, we can see your person. screen actually. Yeah. So I'm so let's look at screen. say you know let's look at sort of the, the definition, right? You know, polynomial is is essentially um, consists of uh, it's it's a you know variables or indeterminate. I like to use variable stuff um, that that can build from variables. By means of adding, multiplying, exponent, and, and, and exponents to a non-negative power. So, so when you have stuff where you have, you know, some some variable with a constant out front, and you're adding or subtracting these things and raising the powers, that's a that's a polynomial. Yeah. Um, now, an interesting thing on this, I actually had a long debate years ago with. Um, uh, a guy on the internet, he went by the name Casper, he claimed to be a, an engineer, and I think he probably was, but uh, he was he was the ones leading the charge against the whole 0.99 repeating equals one. He oh. was he's one of the ones fighting against it, and um, you know everybody realizes that he was wrong. But yeah. uh, I had a, a confrontation with that same guy uh, on the distinction between a, a alphabetic representation of an unknown as a coefficient versus a variable. And I wonder if you can weigh in on that. So, like, for 
let's say you have the quadratic formula, you have some kind of general polynomial. Like like this that right here. This this three x cubed minus five x plus four. Sure, right? sure. Right hey, there. Uh, on the uh, x squared was x squared minus four x plus seven that one? No, three x squared minus five x. Where's that one? I'm scrolling. Right, right here on my on my, on my screen. Uh, I, I can see it. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So there's three, three terms. There's, there's three terms in that particular uh, expression, yeah. right? And obviously it's the second order because it goes. There's second a second order there. Yeah. But the in the quadratic form that that'll be listed looked at as ax squared minus bx plus 4. x yes. variable. But a and yeah. b are coefficients, 3 and 5. Even though they're a letter and they represent a very specific letter, they're fixed, so they are coefficients. And so my argument yes. to him was that just because something has a letter, like a or b, does not make it a variable. It can represent a coefficient, and the coefficients are not variables in the quadratic equation. And he That's, disagreed with me till, till, till years he disagreed with me on that. And everybody that I found that he was wrong. But, I mean, in physics, you know, the fame, I don't know if Einstein's famous, the, the simplified version of Einstein's famous formula, E equals MC squared. C squared, C is not a variable. Correct. It's a constant. In fact, the fundamentals of relativity is C is a constant, right? So you see in physics, there's, a, there's an equation where, you know, where, where you, you have the equivalent between, between mass and energy, um, and that, you know, when you use the same, same units, where C squared is the, is the, is the, is the constant of, of between the right. two. Right, and, and I had actually used a very similar argumentation with So it was like trying to, to explain to the, him Look, when it's talking about variables in the quadratic, it's talking about the unknown quantity, which is x. It's not talking about the dependent variable. Yeah, I mean, so, coefficients defined in mathematics um, is a multiplicative factor of some term, right? So, so the thing that's multiplying it here is 3. Now, if I went up to the top here, they have a polynomial here where you can have, you can have polynomials where the, 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 the coefficients are, are not numeric constants, but they could actually be um, uh, you know, variables. Right, but his argument was because the coefficients can change, because, you know, let's say you'll have, you have ax squared, and a represents 3 in the first term, his argument was, well, you can put any variable there. C, for the speed of light, is not a variable because that number is fixed. And I understood yeah. that, and I kept explaining to him, sure, you can represent any number you want with any letter, even in the quadratic. But when we're looking at the coefficients, coefficients are fixed integers or numbers, or usually sure. they're integers, but I mean, and, I guess they don't have yes. to be, but. Yeah, and you can have also, you know, a, a, a polynomial function. So, so for example, I just highlighted this, um, as you can see here, x cubed, you know, x cubed times y squared is one term, mm -hmm. and 7x cubed, y cubed is another term, and negative 3x to the fifth is another term, right? Yes. So, in if if this was a fung a polynomial of the variable x, then then um, y could be considered part of the coefficient. Yeah. You could have a you could have you could in fact you could you could have a class of functions where where y is fixed for a given polynomial. Yeah, I I I, I know you can do that. I generally don't use that nomenclature that way. I generally no. use x and y as variables, a, b, c yes. as constants. Um, there's no set fast rule for that, but no. just about any math book I've ever read will have the lower alphanumerics to represent uh, constants, and then the higher you know, alpha, uh, which would be the x, y, and z, which would represent variables. Yeah. So, and, and the reason I say is because you know, like the polynomial, ax squared plus bx plus c, when mm -hmm. we go and talk about the quadratic formula, a, b, and c are, by convention, are your coefficients. So, so they're going to represent a constant, but you don't have to represent a specific constant, right? So, so the difference between, you know, um, you know bx and 5x, um, that you could use b as being your coefficient, um, 
and and you don't at that point care what it is, but it is some value. Right? That's yeah. that's maybe that's that's the the, the point to think about. Yeah, and especially um, when when we get into matrix and you're looking at these polynomials and and these linear equations and the coefficients of what you're trying to determine by using the matrix theory, which I yeah. always thought was one of those fascinating things in math was. Hey, I could actually by fig, I could if I know the coefficients, I could figure out uh, the system of linear equations using matrix theory, which still yeah. boggles my mind how that's done. I, mean, I, it, I, even know, I even know how to do it; it boggles my mind. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a it's a really a fun part of, of mathematics. So so these these polynomials have so essentially again you know polynomial of some some variable, let's say x, and you have these terms that you're adding or subtracting. And in the term is a coefficient and a variable raised to a non-negative integer power, right? And so you can have, you know, um, uh, things that are that are that are not not when you when for example here's a case that here's here's a polynomial, right? And here's a polynomial. You can add these polynomials together by by going through you know going through terms and 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 canceling out. So so there are things you can do with polynomials, such so addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, that work. And, and when you get into matrix stuff, that's you'll, yeah, you'll see follow, that they, they follow the yeah. standard associative and communicative communic yeah. laws. And so, yeah, I remember the, having to add polynomials, subtract them, then you have to simplify, then reduce, and yes. for the entire family. Yeah. Well, I say, and once you got into the theory, then you just let the you let the uh, you know, let the computers or your algebraic system do it, do it for you. So so um, so these polynomials have have some really are, are used you know often you very often out you know throughout things in 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 you know certainly in mathematics, but in terms of physics, um, you know um, a lot of stuff related to economics, um, well, you know, solving systems. Very often use these sort of polynomials because you get sort of an um, expression of a variable, and and now now the thing is that that these polynomials have a a finite number of terms. By convention, we we write the terms in in descending powers of your variable. So, so the now, highest that's, exponents that's are going to be on the left hand side. Yeah, the high, highest it, exponents it, first. Yeah, it's perfectly okay to flip around. It's just it's just uh, is seen as being awkward, if if I may. Yeah, Maybe so well, quick. when I was learning polynomials, we, we would often have to put it in, the, in a general descending form, even if it didn't have, you know, even if there was no, uh, if the coefficient was zero, you would actually still have to put uh, x in with, you know, b being zero, so plus zero x, right? Yes. So, so if you have a squared plus a a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero in your general form for your quadratic equation. Whenever you're putting something in the general form, even if you didn't have those values, you still wanted to put it in that form. And I think a lot of it is for looking at the 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 way you're going to expand these in a general expression, yes. and then look at it from okay from your sub from your um, uh, subscript. Right, so you start with you know a a and x, and then you, your next one's going to be a minus n minus one, then n n minus two, dot dot dot, symbolizing all the way up to how many mm -hmm. terms you have, right? So yeah, when we when I took college algebra, which is actually the Texas A M extension program, uh, that's how we had it. Yeah, and and oftentimes when you, you you look at you know you go into linear algebra and you're multiplying polynomials, you're really taking the coefficients. Of the polynomials and doing operations on the coefficients um, is is that that's why you tend to you know, put it into a a, a similar order, right? Um, and if you have to pick and you want you if you're going to you, you're going to composite two two polynomials or do some operation on two polynomials, um, it's easier if the polynomials have a similar term order, right? To be consistent. Um, yeah, because it gets very confusing. <laughs> yeah, and I and I, and I kind of learned that the hard way later on. To think of these terms as individual, distinct entities, right? So I yes. mean, uh, you know, like x squared is a different a is an apple, while x cubed is an orange. They're incompatible with each other, right? Yeah. So yeah. I learned yeah. to look at each each specific thing as an individual, distinct item that you can't just mix and match. True. Now, 
Now, you know, to be to be to you know, to be careful because people might be screaming about saying, you know, like for example, this they cook at this polynomial here, which is a single term, five uh, x squared times y, right? Um, this could also be a two function polynomial where these are x and y are 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 both variables, right? It doesn't have to be um, the the case. You know, you could because you could sit there and say, well, this is a you could say this is a polynomial of y, and the coefficient is five. 5x squared, but commonly when you talk about coefficient, you're typically talking about the factor out front, like this case minus five. Right? I like to say you add terms and the coefficients can be negative. Yeah. Some people like to add or subtract terms so the coefficients are always positive. But, but for example, like in the negative 5x squared at y, there are two coefficients there. It's just one is not shown. There's yes. always an applied coefficient of one on any variable uh, if you don't if you, if, if you show don't show it or not. So it's it's five. Yeah x squared times 1y, where the 1 is the coefficient of the y. So that's yes. another thing. My, my, I had to help my daughter with her, her homework uh, not too long ago, and that was something they were stressing with, with, with them, was that these do have a implicit coefficient of 1 if it's not explicitly yes. stated. And yes. uh, they were drilling that home, and I thought that was actually pretty important because that does come into – Play later on a lot of times, and, and, and people seem to forget. Particularly that if you're there. trying to build a matrix of coefficients right. and do operations on it, you want you don't want to forget the one, right? Right, you don't um, want to drop the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so big difference between zero x and one x. Big yeah, big difference, but, and even then, zero is still a coefficient that you have to put in the matrix. So typically, I'm sorry, I'm trying to cough. Um, typically, the coefficients are are. Or multiple of factors, right? So, so normally what you would say is the coefficient in this expression. You know, if you just saw this and knew nothing about what's going on, you'd say the coefficient is minus five. Yeah, I, I, I always refer to them as magnitude. Yeah, that works too. Because when you're when you're looking at a scalar function, a scalar function is going to be some basically a vector without a mag, uh, without a direction. It, so, a scalar yeah. would be a, a, a very similar to a vector, but a vector is, is a as a direct as a magnitude plus a direction so if you have like 5x uh plus three or something uh it, it, it and you want to put that into a, to combine it with some other polynomial and you want to combine the vectors uh if they have a direction right an angle with it then that would be considered a vector if not it's just a scalar quantity but the the magnitude of x will be very important in, in vectors two two x and x are double the size of the of the magnitude when you're adding yeah. vectors, that makes a huge difference when you're... And, and, and we'll do some graphing to sort of show you what happens when you sort of play with these coefficients. Yeah. So, so let's, let's, let's and rather than get into, and this is, again, notion when you get into really heavy, pedantic stuff, let's just take the simple case, which is coefficients are, are multipliers of a variable, constant multiplier of a variable. Will, will, you, will you put a shout out to Jesse and say that you love squiggles? Oh, I love squiggles. squiggles. Squiggles are amazing. Squiggles and math, particularly the tilde, is, is my. Yeah. I often refer to the tilde as a squiggle. I, I do. You know what? I do prefer the tilde only because it's faster the type than the tail. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I do have my own type of little nomenclature usages. Like I use a tail mostly when I'm using Boolean, and I'll use a squiggle when I'm using predicate or um, uh, basically sentential math. So yeah. if I'm just doing a. Regular logic, I'm just going to be using a tilde because it's faster. So that's what the squiggles yeah. are trying. Because Je Jessie's a oh. huge math person. She's she's like yeah. loves math, like loves loves Excellent. loves. She could do she could do multivariable calculus in her head. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean if you if you keep all the terms there, then then that's that's right. The, Jess, the Je Jess is just so good at math. Ask ask her any anything about calculus. Just do it instantly. Yeah, and and you know that was the thing when I so when kidding. I. Um, when when <laughs> when, I, when I came out of my uh, 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 surgery, um, where I wanted to not freak out because they had basically hooked me up to every orifice, and they actually made a couple extra ones um, when I was all through the machines. And and the thing you had to do was not panic, right? You had to and, and stay calm. Yeah, good luck with that. Until, one. <laughs> until they pulled out some of the tubes that. Were, were kind of obnoxious. Yeah. And so what I did to not freak out was to do you know, algebra and, and, and try to solve algebraic equations in my head, right? And that's I how he solved the Riemann hypothesis. That's how he proved it. <laughs> then what it looked, right? Yes. So I had to do it all in my head and, and come up with the problems and focus on that, really concentrate, 
you know, because it's like distract yourself, right? That's a, it's a good thing to distract yourself. Anyway, um, so so these 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 terms, these polynomials, you you probably have heard the word quadratic, right? I have, um, yes. Or 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 cubic or or quartic. These are Quintic. these are 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 you know names of polynomials to a degree. So a quadratic is this is a quadratic polynomial. Um, it has a degree of two because the highest power of the variable that doesn't that has a non-zero coefficient is x squared. I mean, there is if you're gonna be really really pedantic, there's an x cubed here, but the coefficient is zero. We don't care about those things. Right? And, and remember that terms are separated in algebra by plus or minus sign. So if you want to know how many terms there are, look at the Subtraction and addition. So, yeah. in, in like what he's showing, there's three terms. Why? Because you have 3x squared minus 5x plus 4. So, there are three independent terms in that polynomial yeah. expression. Yeah. And, and so, some people will say you add the terms together and the coefficient is minus 5. So, you would say, you know, one way you think of it is it's 3x squared plus negative 5x plus four. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, and and so the degree of the polynomial is the is the highest integer power, but but polynomials are are, are defined um, with with positive integer power. So this is just descending order from the degree of the exponentiation. Yeah. So the first term is squared. So that's a second degree. The second yeah. term has x to the first is an implied yes. first there, which I've gone over in my, my math yeah. videos to, to, so people recognize that if you have 5x, it is saying the same thing as 5x to the first there. Is it, yes. In, is yes. it implied uh, one exponent? So that's the yeah. degree one. And the third has no exponent on the variable that doesn't exist there, so it's just a zero degree. Right? Yeah, and, and in fact, what, what is really there implied is x to the zero power. With x to the zero power, yes, which yeah. is one. So so you say, well, what is, you know, let's say, so let's go back and say, what and do you mean? You can put that in there. I, you could put, I mean, 3x squared yeah. minus uh, plus, it would actually be 3x squared plus, plus negative 5x to the first x. plus 4x to the zero. X to the zero, right. right. Now, now, what does it mean by x? You know, people say well, x squared. Well, x squared, you could think of, you say, well, let's, let's just multiply x times itself, right? This number, when, if you see something like, you know, something, you know, if this was x cubed, like this thing here, um, you know, this is this this x cube is x times x times x. This yeah, x is I don't, this. and I don't like when when Common Core x, I, x, they try to explain yeah. it as repeated multiplication. I think that's a very poor way no. to learn it. And 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 that's that you understand that's a really sort of degenerate simple case. Yeah. So so yeah, why exactly. would why would x the first be just you know um just x? Well, think about what happens when you divide x squared by x. You would have x times x on the numerator and x in denominator. So the x's cancel, you left with just x, right? When you divide by x, you reduce the power by one. So we have x cubed divided by x is x squared. X, you know, so x to the third divided by x is x to the second. You, you reduce the power by one. So every, 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 every x you're dividing by, you just reduce the exponent by one. Yes. So when you go x squared divided by x to the second power divided by x, you're reducing the two by one to get x. x first, right? So so what is x divided by x? One. One. And unity. And so you took that x to the first power and you reduced it by one, so you have x to the zero. Yeah. That's why x. That's why x is zero now. Uh, is, is 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 considered one. So when you see a number four out there in this term. They're sort of an implied x to the zero power, but people don't usually. Do it. You can again. It's okay if you put the terms in different. It really helps to conceptualize when you learn your math. Though. I think yeah. I think it I think it helps to conceptualize. Yeah. The first, you know, for a while, put it in there. So the first one yeah. polynomials, just put it in there. You're you're, you're not going to get marked off. I don't think for putting too much information yeah. as if it's right. If you're doing it to to understand the concepts. In fact, um, I was going over Bloom's taxonomy for. A, a logical approach to learning, and one of the basics is is basically this knowledge, no rote memorization, just learning it right rote. And then the next thing is learning the concepts. And I think that when you're learning math, it really helps to learn the concepts early because you try to go back and just do it after the rote memorization. It makes it epically harder. I found that out. 
Sure. Is. So I sure. And, and yes. So you want to be you want to be careful in that way, um, but but understand as well there's a difference between you know what is technique correct and convention. Again, right. like this this polynomial is written in conventional form. Yeah. If the terms were reordered, it wouldn't be wrong. It would just be unconventional. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, even even still, I mean, if you, if you want to put this in a generalized form and you want to put the expression into a solution, so if, if I want to put it equal to zero, uh, mm -hmm. that would be in the generalized case for quadratic yeah. uh, polynomial. Uh, but if I re if I started moving the terms around, uh, even though it's not changing anything as far as the math, it wouldn't be in the form. Yes. It wouldn't be conventional, conventional form, form, but it would still be and, correct. And, right. and you could, people, somebody could actually get confused or right. make mistakes. And I try to put so, things in, in form so it's just easier so people can say, look at it and go, oh, look, this is exactly the form that we're looking for for the general order. Yeah. General so term. remember, you know, polynomials have these integer powers and what they say non negative integer powers. So, so what, would you mean, what would be x to the minus one power? And this is why don't think of exponentiation as merely repeated multiplication, because what is what is it what is x multiplied itself minus one times right? What do we really mean by that? Well, remember x to the zero power is one. So let's divide by x. X to the zero power divided by x is going to give us x to the negative first. So now you're going to have a square root. You know, you get you get a reciprocal. Recipro well, okay, yeah. If you, well, if you get a minus, you get a reciprocal. But if it's going to be minus one half, yeah. then you're going to have the reciprocal. I know we'll get, to, they, we'll get to the non-negative stuff later, but right. but but the negative numbers, right? This so means so the denominator. You, that's all. So so if you saw x to the negative second power, that's one over x squared, mm -hmm. right? So so um, what it means to have a negative coefficient in the exponent here, the negative exponent here. Excuse me. Negative exponent here is is you're talking about reciprocals. Yep, you're just going to stick it in the denominator. So if it's x yep. to the negative fifth, it's x one. It's, it's reciprocal of x to the fifth, or one over yep. x to the fifth. So, so it's good. It's good. Quite, it would be quite proper if you had this expression. Let's say we added um, six times x to the minus first. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a polynomial, but it'd be a valid expression. Anyway, so if we if this was if this thing was here and we said plus six to the x six times x to the minus first six to the coefficient mm -hmm. and 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 the the, the 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 of that term and the minus one would be the power which means the same as six divided by x right and if yep. you had seven seven times x to the minus second it would be like seven divided by x squared right you the the, the things that go into go into the denominator um but but polynomials constant stop at zero Right, they, they don't go below that. Um, uh, now, now, let's see if you talked about. Let's talk about that case of what well, you know. It wouldn't be part of polynomial because polynomials have integer powers. But what would what would we mean by x to the one half? What do you mean by multiplying itself one half times? It's taking the x, it's telling you to put it in the denominator, so it has a reciprocal, and it's taking the square root of it. Yeah, so one half so, is going to be equal to the square root. If it's if it's negative, negative one half, it's going to be the denominator, and it's going to be the square root. If it's just x to the one half, that's just saying, okay, what am I going to put it next to that radical, right? Which is the case two, which is the same as the square root function. Sure. So when you when you multiply powers of a variable, you add of the same variable, you can add exponents. So if I take x squared, x to the second, times x cubed, x to the third, um, the the, the the product of that is x to the fifth power, because 2 plus 3 equals 5. x to the second times x to the third is x to the fifth. 2, 3, 5, right? So, so if you said, so if I said x to the one-half power times x to the one-half power, what do I do? I, 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 I add those two terms together. Mm -hmm. One-half and one-half is one. Right? So x to the one half times itself is x. It is the square root, right? It's yep. the thing multiplied by itself to give you the, the, the value, right? And it turns out that this this exponent here can be can be anything. It could be you can you can say x to the two point one power. You can have x to the you could have x to 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 a 
to uh, uh, you know Absolutely. adds to the pie. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, that, right? those, those, that that starts getting pretty interesting when you have. But 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 so so just don't don't get hung up on on uh, exponentiation is repeated multiplication right. because x to the pi power is not you multiply pi times. It's it, you have to do a logarithm. Right, that's right, a, exactly. That's, that, that's that was my point earlier because uh, you know, is multiplication is merely repeated addition or things of that nature. Exponentiation, multiplication, uh, it doesn't always apply in it. It conceptually makes it difficult to show that you're taking, for example, that's something that's two-dimensional for any kind of uh, cubing, but you're making it a three-dimensional. Uh, and so it, it doesn't really show you what's going on when you start doing things like squaring and start cubing and things of that nature, how it actually produces an, an extra dimension you have to worry about rather than just repeated you know, um, multiplication. Yeah. Does so, that make sense? Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. Um, by the way, are there any, any questions so far um, from the chat or any comments or anything we've gotten wrong or, or people disagree All with good us? so far. Okay. Um, so, so we have, you know, these, what, you know, if we've talked about the fact that polynomials have to have um, positive integer powers, um, what is X? What can X be? Well, X can be anything. It can be an integer. It can be a a real number. Um, like it could, you know, X could be the square root of seven, right? Um, X can even be complex numbers. It, it, X is is really a variable that that could have anything. Typically, when you're dealing with a topic. You kind of know your 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 you know, domain that you're working in. Um, so, in if you're doing with something like you know, if you're doing something dealing with math or something like that, or in a, in a kinetics thing, you you're dealing with with a, your variable might be mass. Um, if you're dealing sometimes in circuitry, your variable might be a complex represented by a complex number. So, so this X can really be anything, right? Some but you need to kind value. of know the realm of which you're you're working in. Yeah, it could be grams, it could be bergs, it could be watts, it could be apples, it could be any unknown quantity. Yeah. And by the way, you know, zero, the polynomial is zero. Zero is a polynomial. Yeah, yeah. Poly- polynomial zero. Right yeah, zero, zero. Uh, it, it, it's yeah. it's it's zero, zero times X to the zero power. Right, which is which is zero, and and so um, so so, but usually you have polynomials of, of some some sort of degree, um, and and so real polynomials have you know um, it can also have you know, have with real coefficients. Sometimes you deal with a topic where the coefficients are only integers. Right, so 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 this this multiplier right here. Doesn't have to be an integer. This could be three point five, um, but but and 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 so real polynomial has real coefficients. Um, you can have multi you know multivariate polynomials where you have multiple variables in it. But tip, but we're going to be talking about well, let's let's talk about the sort of simple case of a polynomial of one variable. Uh, uni, univariate. Yeah, and that's that's the term there. Now you know. These polynomials here, you can add, subtract them, right? There, there's a, here again. You look at this stuff. Here's a case of multiplying two polynomials together. You basically do all the cross product terms, and you get this resulting compound. You know, a product of two of our two two polynomials, right? If you go through all those, grind through all those terms, um, it's it's character building to do it a couple times, but eventually you want a computer to do it because it's very easy. And miss a term, right? And this is one of the things that was was always a difficult thing on a physics test is if you're having to multiply a couple of polynomials to get a result, and you and you get you figure get one of these terms, or you add it in twice or something, you're screwed. Or you 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 you, you take a plus sign and turn a minus sign. <laughs> oh, I used to have a bad habit of that. Well, this um, is one of the reasons why these kind of um, problems took up you know full math boards. Uh, I mean, we didn't have computers do this. <laughs> I had math, not like that. And I know you didn't either, but you know, when you had well, to do math like this and you had to know it on a chalkboard, 
it would take a lot of space on the chalkboard. Um, no. yeah. But, but you know, in some ways, at some point when I when I sort of you said I passed my algebra tests, and why do I keep needing to do this? Um, so you say, you know, you know, yes, I actually did have access to things like maximum, right? As as a you know as a as a young teenager, I was on the internet back in like you know in in, in early seventies. And I had access to you know, like machines at MIT, these list machines at MIT, where you could do, you could type in these equations and, and say P times Q, and it would give you all those terms, right? It would do them, do, do all the grinding for you, right? And, and, and so once I kind of knew the concept, I said, why do I need to keep things over the head? And, and so in case I would do for stuff and doing homework, and I want to, you know, I want to check my results. I sometimes would throw it a maximum. Again, I'm not cheating. I'm letting Maxima go and and do the terms. And sometimes Maxima would come out, and the terms would be in weird order, right? So, so I would sort of, I would sort of canonicalize the thing to make it a little bit, you know, make it more, more, more normal. But you know, if if um, I like to use, I like to, for example, have a calculator on algebra tests. What does this mean, calculator? Why would you use a? How can you use a calculator for that? You know, in a standard, you know, standard four-function calculator, right? The answer is that you can plug in numbers. Right? here's a here's a polynomial p of x and y. Here's a polynomial q of of x and y. I can plug in numbers to p q and then multiply p q together and see if I get the same product. Right? You you could you could assign x to be three yeah, you, and yeah, y to be four. Yeah, exactly. Get p, get q. P times Q, and this thing better give you the same answer. So you can, you can on while you're doing your tests, you can do a check, right? You can do a multiplication check or addition check to make sure it, it worked out. And if it didn't, you blew a term. You go back and you fix, you find your find your term you did or or, or you forgot it. Yeah, a, we had programmable song. calculators where you could you could program stuff like that. I mean, I would use Wolfram Alpha nowadays for all yeah. that. But. Yeah, and that's another thing. Maxima was was an early list machine thing. Um, sort of well, one of the early predecessors to 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 uh, things like Wolfram Alpha, um, and we can do that. You can use Wolfram Alpha. There. I can pull it up there, and, and we can look at some of the stuff. Um, but here's a case. You know, the problem is you can factor them, right? That that this x to the third minus five can be decomposed into a product of two polynomials and a coefficient of that. So why do you care about why why would people care about polynomials? You can say, well, so what's you, know, you might say, so what? Why, why, why is the event landing going on about polynomials? What is the what 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 good are they? And 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 oftentimes one of the things you want to know is when a polynomial is zero. You would solve for something. So often what you end up doing is you say, I have this polynomial whose value is zero. What is the value? Right? Um, and, and so in, in here, when you start, and one of the things to think about the concept, what does it mean for saying, well, polynomial equals zero, what value of x is plugging into the polynomial gives you zero? Yeah, matter of fact, my daughter was doing that with these uh, polynomial functions, which I didn't recognize the mapping uh, nomenclature for the polynomial function. I don't know if that's relatively new. Um, that's not how I learned polynomials. And so if you look at like solving equations there, there's a, there's a function that's defined. So you have X and then you have the, the arrow yeah. symbol. And that I didn't really quite recognize. And so I actually yeah. had, I had asked, asked uh, uh, Josh Garver, who's a mathematician, I'm like, dude, what the hell are they asking for? Yeah, my daughter's homework here. This, 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 this denotation here. Yeah, you probably saw something like that. Yeah, and, and I, I'm, I've I've seen the symbol before, but not used this particular way for polynomials. I've seen it used for mapping feature functions, like for example, f of x r to r, something along yeah. those lines. But um, uh, I just I hadn't seen it used the way they were using it. I'm like, so what is what are they yeah. asking for in this? And yeah. after he explained it to me, I'm like, well, that's that's like silly, stupidly simple. But yeah, it's like why are they why are they making it so complicated and why are they adding this? This is like tenth grade math, and I'm like, uh... and it doesn't seem to be appropriate for tenth grade math. I mean, this polynomial notation function notation 
it's useful when you get into things like Honolulu rings. And yeah, yeah, Albert. yeah, exactly. That's what he was saying too. But, but like, you're not doing that in, 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 a, in yeah, I don't think they're doing it in, in 10th grade algebra. Now they probably should because some of those ring stuff is really fascinating. Well, and that would be that's, great, but that's not what they were trying, but there was no ring theory yeah. in, in this. And yeah. it just, so it just, that's what I think it's called. So, so, so when, when you're looking at this book on your page, you do see things like a ring. You can click on ring and get a whole big thing about, you know, starting to talk about, about, about rings, because rings are actually quite, quite important, but they're out. That would say it's too far. Too yeah, far I have a, a Dr. Uh, Pye, William Pye, uh, had written a uh, entry on my blog on, on rings, fields, things of that nature. Kind of explain the difference between a group, a uh, Abelian group versus a field versus yeah. a ring, which yeah. is the, the integer set, which is the real set. And, and it, uh, yeah. if people are interested in that, they can go to my blog and find that. I didn't put it in the video description, yeah. but uh, I will ask. But, but anyway, so, so in this in this Wikipedia article, again, we, we, we were looking at, at polynomial. You can start to explore some of the stuff about what do you mean by, you know, negative, you know, non-negative power and exponentiation and so forth. You can start to drill down and see some of those things. But let's... Let's, you know, we, we've talked about these polynomials and terms and, and definitions. In fact, you can multiply them and you can even divide them. Um, oftentimes, when you divide a polynomial by a polynomial, you won't get a polynomial. You'll get a fraction. That's that, 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 that you can multiply polynomials together and get a polynomial. But oftentimes, you multiply, divide a polynomial by another polynomial, you'll just get a, you'll, you'll, you'll get, just get a fraction. Unless you can factor it. Like, here's a case. You know, x, you know, five x to the third minus five can be factored into these two polynomials. So if you took x, x cubed minus five and divided by x minus one, you would get a polynomial because this, this, this polynomial is actually a composite. It's factorable. The reason, right? Um, Calculus, it shows up. Polynomials get 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 show up in, in important calculus. But let's let's talk about let's talk about just before we get into calculus. Let's talk about the case of of we have a polynomial and we want to know what value of x will give us zero. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, using sort of Descartes, um, you know, uh, was one that came up with this notion of graphs. These are 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 Cartesian planes, right? Of Descartes, right? He he had essentially you know x and y. And what do we mean by this little line here? What is this line representing? Well, these are the points X and Y that that solve this equation that, that are there. Like these, these are the this. roots of where the X intercepts are. Yeah, so, so this, this red line here is when you vary X, what X squared minus X minus two gives you. Right. This is this. So this this when you see this graph, this is says if you plug an x, if you plug an x here, somebody, over here is y. So when we so what does it mean by that? Well, when we when we plug in three into this this equation, we get four. So if you put three squared, let's check it out. Three squared is nine minus x3 is 6 minus 2 is 4. That's correct. So when you plug in 3 into the function, you get 4. But that line there, when you see the line, is if you, it, when the line is really saying, for this value of x, you get this value of y. Right? When you plug in, when you plug in x here, the value over here on the y-axis is the result of the polynomial. And, it, and if, uh, I, if you look at the, um, Polygonobial degree zero, no matter yes. what you put in there, it's always going to be. Yeah, two is always two. <laughs> it's always no two. matter what, that's, that's why you get yeah, a line. Remember, because so, there is no variable, so you're going to get a line. No matter, well, so whatever, there is no input to be had um, on the x. So yeah, or you could think of two, two times x to the zero power. Two. Yeah. So so that's a constant function. You know, here's a linear function. Why is it called linear? It's a line. That's what linear means, right? This 2x minus 1, again, what this means is when you plug in x here, the value over here, y, is 2x minus 1. Yeah, and then changing x there is just going to shift where the line is located. Yeah, 
So, so when I finish this off, I'm going to flip over, and then Steve can show you on a graph function. We'll play with some of the things. But I wanted to get you a notion that that constants are a constant. Linear polynomials are lines. Quadratic degree two has this sort of little curve thing here. Cubics has this little dippy dip, typically. Two, two, two inflection points. Yeah. So, so when we when we talk about you know how this polynomial solving it for zero, right? Two x. If you say two x plus one equals zero, what is x? Well, it's that value. It's 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 really what happens when it crosses the x x axis. What what value gives you zero is when this line crosses the x axis. So the solution two x plus one is right there, which happens to be minus one half. Yeah, actually, looking at that cube, I'm sorry. There's there's only one inflection point on that degree of three. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah the, there's the, the so, right there so, at that so, center. So, there's one inflection point. There's... So so we're and these in these polynomials, we're talking about when does it thing equal zero? It's when we like if you take if you take this this function, you know, when does x squared minus x minus two equal zero? Answer is there's two values here and here when x is minus 1 and when x is 2. So so when you when you talk about a polynomial you have a, you graph a polynomial on the plane and you say when is it zero right when does when does remember y where y is the output of the function x is the input when you give in and give you when you get this value of x you get that value of y you say so what does it mean by saying this this polynomial equals zero it means what is the x value when you, when what is the x value when when it's when y is zero? You're crossing the x axis. Yeah, which is so again now, your 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 roots are going to be your yeah. x intercepts or where it crosses. So notice what happens here. Um, in the case of a constant, two is never going to equal zero, right? So there's no solution for 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 that. But, but in the linear case, it crosses it here. In the, in the quadratic case, it, you have potentially two solutions. So there are two values, x squared minus x minus 2, that can give you 0 when x is minus 1 and when x is 2. Now, this cubic thing here, this, this, here's, a, here's a polynomial. And again, we see x cubed divided by 4. What they're really saying is the, cons, the coefficient is, one, is 1 fourth. One fourth to the third power plus three fourths to the second power minus you know three minus three halves to the first power minus two to the zero power, right? So this 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 polynomial here has three solutions when x is zero. Here, here, and here. So notice as we go up degrees, we have the potential to get more than one answer. Mm -hmm. um, so let's look at the fourth power. Here's a case, wiggle, 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 it's one, two, three, four. Here's a case. Now, it does not mean that every time you will get all the solutions, right? Let's look at this fifth power here, this fifth degree polynomial. There's, it only crosses the axis three times. What the heck? How does that happen? Well, Let's go and let's go and have Steve start graphing stuff, and we'll talk about what does it mean when it doesn't cross the x-axis okay. in one of the collections. Just uh, see if people can figure out. So the poly degree. Uh, look at the polynomial degree one. If you want to scroll up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. If people want to figure out the solution to that, if they can, real quick in their heads. I'll give you a hint. You want to say what we're talking about is is that the equation. 2x plus 1 equals 0. What is yeah, x? You want to set it to 0 and solve for x. And then you've got to do it. I'll tell you where the x intercept is. Solution. Yeah. To that poly. Remember, the output is 0. What input of x gives the output of 0? What input of x gives the output of 0? Right. So you want me to screen share Desmos, I guess? Sure. All right. Uh,
Okay, I'm in the graphing Desmos stuff right now. Hey, okay. um, am I seeing? I can share it with you. Yeah. There we go. You should be able to see it now. All right. So um, let's take and 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 given your sizes there, we're going to give you know, small coefficients so it doesn't blow up. Let's do um, one fourth times x cubed. X cubed, x to the third power, plus three fourths times x squared minus three halves x minus two. All right. Okay. So there now, now those dots showed you the gray dots it put on there showed you um a couple of interesting spots. Um, so what does it mean when you say this thing equals zero? Well, we're talking about where does this thing cross the x-axis? And, and visually, you can actually see the answer is pretty easy. Yes. Yes. Now, the problem is you can't count on graphs to solve your right. your equations, right? Um, yeah, I mean, you can zoom in on this, and you can assume that it's like this one is negative four, but, I mean, until you actually solve it, it may not be the case. It could be super, super close. It could be 3.9 or something, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and really, it looks like function, two and negative four, though. Obviously, yeah. When 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 you look at this function, there are a couple of, of points of interest, right? Um, well, typically is again, when does it cross the axis? When is when is y zero? Right. So, but, so it looks like four, negative four, negative one, negative four. and two are the three right. solutions. Right. Um, another thing that can have, be interesting is when does it does it flatten out? Right, it's called an inflection point. There, yeah. there are the only inflection point here is at negative one, which is going to show a, a difference in uh, uh, the way I look at it for determining an inflection point. If this area under, is underneath the curve or not, so this area is underneath the curve, and here this area is above this particular line. So this is an inflection point that, that changed from this direction yeah. to a different direction. Yeah. Yeah. This Another one area. Here. This, this yeah. is an inflection yes. point. So another case is that that, that it, it's, it is is that when does that when does the 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 curve go level? Yeah. Right. So it's all on those two slots there where, where the derivative. What well, this is what what's called the derivative is zero. Well, when that would be that would be at the relative maximum ah. minimum. Yes. So whatever. So, so they are relative, meaning there. obviously this can go to infinity and negative infinity. But but you're really talking about this, this might be some phenomenon over some range, rational range, and you want to know when it's stable. So you might get because those things go way off. Yeah, infinity, I mean, it, 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 it's, you you could pretty much assume probably that these are the absolute minimum and maximum. Well, there's no absolute minimum and maximum because it goes off the chart. But this is a relative maximum. This is a relative minimum. Yeah. Yeah. And so we took a derivative of this thing and solved it for zero. We would actually find. The, the spots because what is the derivative? It's the slope. The del oh. derivative is a point of slope where the sl change rate of change is zero. Yeah. So so if you put a if you put a if you put a line, you could draw drew a line that touched the, the, the thing in one spot. Where, where should this be? What do you think this is? Two two point six or something? Two point where, where's this relative maximum at? It probably what 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 two point because if I just went two point six it should you should draw a line just about there. Well, actually, I guess on the y, okay. sorry. Oops. So y equals 2.6. Yeah, there you go. See? Yeah. Give, it, give or take, there should be a line there. And see how that, yeah. that line has no slope, has no rate yeah. of change, so that derivative is going to be yeah. zero. And there's going to be another one. Yeah. At, I, again, I'm, I'm guessing here. This is just eyeballing. Six negative. There you go. Yeah. Now we close. could actually solve that by taking the derivative and and solving that polynomial for zero, right? Yes. I'm not going to do that though, but yeah, sure. Yeah, we, could, we could give it a try and see. We can see. We can act like fools and give it a try, right? Well, I would. Um, I would that's what I use a rule from Alpha for. Let's 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 while you yeah. So go ahead and you can do that. You go ahead and do the. Go ahead and do that. That's it. If you want to do maximum, or we can do the derivative itself. We can we can figure it out. Uh, what do you want to do? Let, let's put, I'm going to put it in a wolf form and see what it comes up with. It. 
Because I, I, I could I could figure it out. The problem is, yeah, I could do it in my head, but, but but let's let's go in. Is this actually? Well, actually, put it in Wolfram. Hey, it actually does. Believe it or not. So I'm not seeing the the. You're only you're oh, only showing right, that one. How, how's that? Okay. Okay. Now can you see it? What it does? All right. So okay. it, it actually plotted it. It actually showed this very similar graph. It zoomed in a little bit, obviously, in the graph. But yeah. I mean, yeah. and and now if you want to take the derivative, because you can you can on this thing click so the derivative. Have, of that. Do I have to click derivative with respect to x? Well, I just the way I would just do it was just d dx. Yeah, but whatever. Is there another way okay. easier to do it? All right, there's a derivative. Okay, so so we have a we have a we have a polynomial three quarters. So what we would do is we would we would solve that polynomial, and there's the roots. Do you see the roots right yep, there? Negative one and negative, negative one. Root of negative three. Yep. So 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 now let's see how how close we are because I'm looking at running a calc. Negative one minus square root of three. What does that give you? Um. That's going to give you um, 2.73. Okay, so that's pretty close. And and the other one, the other one, the 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 the, the, the square root of three minus one. Well, I actually see 2.7 looks like it's a little high here. So uh, 2.6 is actually closer. It looks like. No. So. So what actually is it? Two points? Is it really 2.7? Those are the roots to that. The roots. That's it. If you go back to the previous function. Yeah. No, back to the previous function in Wolfram Alpha, right? Oh. The root of the derivative. Because you can also do things that you can yeah. you can have it, right? There is a result. And if you scroll down farther, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. I'm, scro I'm scrolling one sec. Okay. Right? You'll, you should be able to get the derivative uh -huh. and then local maximum, local minimum. Right. There right. it is. Yeah. So you might have typed in the term wrong. I, I just copied and pasted exactly from Desmos here. Is that not exactly the formula? Let's see. Uh, One quarter uh -huh. x cubed plus three quarter x squared minus three uh, halves x minus two. Yeah. That's what the you're doing. calculator is off. Oh, wait a minute. You said y equals... Well, yeah, I'm just I'm just looking at the line, the tangent to the relative. But I think the line is, is 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 the thickness of the line is is deceiving you. It, it, yeah, it could be. It could be. It's this is the, this is why you can only eyeball it with graphics stuff. Yeah, but yeah, you, but yeah. The root, so, the root is actually two point seven. Uh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you solve it further because we would do this where we find it would be a flow slop of zero would be you take the derivative and find a zero. So that's that's again. I think it says minus y, one minus square root. Of three. Yeah. Well, that gives you negative four, which we know is a, a root, but I'm not trying to find the root. I'm actually just trying to find the. Oh, you're going to minimum, maximum. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's go. We, we, we made a mistake. So yeah. yeah. Us. That's because that's Y that is means. going to give us our X intercept there. That's all that's telling us there. We know that. And the other one, but, but, too. But you want to, you said Y equals that. You want to do X equals. X equals. That's just going to give me a lot of it. Give you, and then y equals that. That would give. That's where that 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 solution is. Yeah, and then the other one would be a line, vertical line at two. Right. Yeah. Because that's your other over here. So, yeah. but I'm what I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find where the relative minima and relative maxima is, which, like I said, looks around two point six on the y axis. That's why I'm I'm looking at y because if y is equal to two point six, that's going to give me at least pretty close on that. That it looks like it's actually two point six. I mean, I don't see it going to two point seven. No. I don't. How do you get two point seven out of that? That is two point six, or two even two point five. Did maybe. I, did I, I may have done a. Um, no, it's two point six. Two point seven is going too high. I may have made a mistake. You, 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 Landon, cannot make mistakes. That is impossible. That would cause the world to crumble. That would cause all math to cease to function any longer. So, so, so I'm going to do 
one fourth x to the third plus three fourths x squared minus three halves x minus two. And then I'll do x derivative. You know that the the derivative that's not okay. Can I can I share a yeah share a different different screen here? Yeah, sure. Let me do uh let me do on sharing. Let me share um uh here. Are sure. you seeing so here's 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 Mathematica. It, it's which is, it's sharing. I just gotta set it up, but it's sharing. So so here is this here is is it is it is it showing now? Yeah, it's showing. It's really hard to see, but I can. Um, can I mag? No, I no, can, it's I fine. It's some, fine. I got. It. I, I can magnify it here. And it's it's fine. There, like that. How about that? Oh, that's much better. Yeah. All right. So here's here's the here's the input, right? And and Mathematica puts it in this form, right? right. They, they have ascending. That's their common form. And if you plot it, we see there is that there is that function. That's not the same function right. I have. Is this not? That's exactly what I typed in there, isn't it? But here the range is much is is is. Is much more right? We're, yeah, yeah. We're, well, yeah. Your range is ungodly bigger. Yeah. So right. It's not so going to. So it's not going to show the nuance near the orange origin then. Yeah. So so we don't plot it. We don't plot it so big, right? Because we, we modify it down, this yeah. thing. Right. Put it between like negative like five, negative two, negative five, and five or something. That, even that might be a bit much. Look at look at your x range though. Your x range is like five hundred. So you need to you need to limit your x range to like five or six or something. Your 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 range on your x is ridiculous. Ah, uh, yeah. So so it's going to be um there. That's better. Yeah, that's getting yeah. Now you can see a little more detail near the origin. Right now, now um, increase your your range to maybe four or five on the x. There we go. You're getting closer. Yeah. See, it, it, it's there we go. There we go. There we go. That's right. perfect. That's perfect. Now, now you now you can see at least it intercepts at the negative four and two intercepts. Exactly. So it's a negative four, one and two. Those are those those solutions. Now, when we take the derivative with respect to x, we get this function. When we plot it, we find that we have two two solutions, right? Here. Which should be shouldn't that be around two point something? Where does it cross the x-intercept there? Yeah. So let's let's have it so that it doesn't. Because that isn't. that should tell you your relative minimum and maximum. Your derivative your derivative tells you that if your if your derivative is zero on your uh, function, yeah. that tells you that at that point you're at either a relative minima or a relative maxima. Yeah. Yeah. So with this thing here, no rate of change. You know, we can we can solve. We can say. You know, equals zero and solve that function. Oh, it's protected. I got to, I got to do this. I got to take this thing here, and 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 say, isn't it protected? I don't know. It's your. You use Mathematica. I don't. Um. Why is it doing that? I'm doing something stupid. Um, well, is that not? What are you trying to do? Are you just trying to find the um, solve, solve for x? Why is it not? I have no doing? idea. I'm, I'm having a brain now. Uh, this is why it's about being tired. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we're both tired today, but we we're gonna we we're, we're still we're gonna do this because we had planned it. 
the other day. Um, it it, so, it it doesn't matter. I think they get the idea that that's that's how you would do it, though. You would normally when you analyze these functions, a lot of things you, you do. You do first. You do a, a first derivative, which gives you relative maxima minima. You do a second derivative. Um, there's a way to find inflection points. There's a way to find um, oh, there it is. Uh, x intercepts, y intercepts, and that's basically just how you work your polynomial. But I was going to show how things would be shifted by changing, you know, some of the values. How you would shift off the origin. How your vertex of the parabol uh, parabolic expression of the of the parabola is going to be different. Uh, whether it's going to be, you know, parabola going, you know, top down, bottom or bottom up. It's going to be. Yeah, I mean, there's a. Working with polynomials was fun, shifting things around and seeing what changes. Yeah. So here's the case, for example, you minimize and you have two values. You have negative 2, 4, 2, 5, and minus 1. So this, this thing here you know, crosses negative 2, 4, 5, and 1 for, for the minimum. As uh, your, your x-intercept. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your y-intercept there. Yeah. Yeah. If you solve for zeros, you get these values here. So, so these... These are the two spots. So it's minus one minus square root of three and minus one plus square root of three are the two spots where it's flat. Yeah. Let's go back to your go back because I, I, but I, I want to see but I want to see exactly how where I can find those y intercept. Well, I'm sorry, the um, relative maximum minimum, not the um, the uh, the y intercept. That's going to be three something, right? Right. Numeric value. The numeric value is two. No, minus no, it was 2. Number, minus two is the y-intercept of on that equation, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, let me go back to my screen here. Let's see. Okay. Okay. And get rid of that. All right. So let me screen share real quick. Okay, so on my Desmos here, um, obviously this function that you gave me, the y-intercept is negative two. I mean, you can actually see. So I was trying to figure out, again, where it touched the relative maxima. Somewhere up here, again, I'm eyeballing around six, but I, I know there's a way to analytically determine that using the, the derivative, but I wasn't gonna get into Doing, taking the derivative and finding exactly what value that is there. Just, I just wanted people to know if that's how you would do it to determine where this absolute, well, I mean, where this relative maxima is. Um, because you can, have, you can have a, a function, a polynomial going up and down multiple times. Um, you can have multiple relative minima and relative maxima, but you can only have one absolute minima, absolute maxima. And here, and here they go off to infinity. It, it, there's... Um, I was being, I was being stupid here on that thing I just solved. Okay. You figured it out. Um, if you, if you go back to, to, to my, if I go back to sharing my screen here. Yeah. One second. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. Here's how you do it. First of all, it's, 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 it's capital S. And you have expression equals zero, and, and, and there, um, so this this is how you do it in Mathematica to say this polynomial when this polynomial equals zero, what is x? And those are those two two values. Okay. Just like if you want to take this original polynomial here mm -hmm. and say let's solve that for zero, right? So we say you say solve like that. Mm -hmm. And there's your two solutions. And, and there, there's, okay, and each one of those is your x-intercept. Yeah. So notice in this, in this polynomial, we have three solutions. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? Um, if, we went to, if we made that just x to the fourth and had it solve, we'd get four solutions. Yeah, but now you're in the complex plane. Yes. So, so let's, let's, take, let's take a, let's take a, a, simple, a simple quadratic, right? Let's plot x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now this thing. I'm going to have it plotted. We see we get this and, and, and have it plotted not so big. 
like minus one to one, right? We're gonna see down here that 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 you know that this the you get it you get a curve going through there. And let's back to let's let's make this let's make this term because it's so it's, it's so big. Um, let's put this minus hundred, right? We're gonna get and now this go between like minus three and three. We see that it's basically it's 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 hitting the x-axis down here at one. Yeah, and it intercepts at the y-axis axis at a hundred. Yes. So in fact, if you if you if you took this term here, took this thing here, and you said, you know, I want to take this thing and solve that thing equals equals zero for x. We have this thing has two solutions, zero and two. Yep. Right. Now, yeah, because you put uh, if you put x if you uh, put two in for x or zero in for x plus one, both of them are going to solve. So there's plus one. one. X squared minus two x plus one has two solutions, one and one. So that's the case if you plot that function. If you plot that function on on down here, and it may be easier for them to see on your no, you can you, you can plot it. It'd be easier. Right? To see. You plot it basically. It's it's touching the x-axis of one spot. Yeah, that that's going to be that's going to be the vertex of that parabola, and only it's only going to intercept yeah. at one. So it's not it's not two solutions. It's actually just one solution of one. Yes. Yeah, that's so true. so so go back to your go back to your graphing function here, um, okay. and 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 take uh, six of these quadratics and 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 we'll show how the how the how the plot changes when you change some of the coefficients. All right, let me. Uh, you don't need this other formula, right? Any longer? No. Okay. You can share it when you show the. Okay. So what am I what am I putting in two x x squared minus. Minus 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 equals 0. Yeah. Can you share it so that I can see the screen too? Or, or yeah, actually, I, I should have put that as 0 in there. It's not going to show. Yeah, I'm going to screen share it. Once there you go. All right. And so plot that thing. All right. So this plotted already. It, yeah. it shows yeah. you that it does intercept at 1. Oh, at 1. Uh -huh. Because that's the, that's the, it's, you got a double solution there. Now, if instead of, instead of, of, you know, if if in this thing here you know, we, we we said you know x squared but plus minus two x plus one and and you know we basically try to solve that for for x that's where we saw that we had had two solutions but but what if you said instead minus instead of plus one you say let's say you said plus two it's just going to move it over to the two. Oh, right. actually, up. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. It's good. It's going to move it up on the x-axis. Yeah. yeah, and if you did three, it's going to move it minus further. Two. Then it's going to go below the origin. Yeah, it's going to be way down here. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that, that moves. So, that's going to move the whole parabola up and down with respect to the origin. Yeah, and then you see when you when you add zero, it one, now, it goes up one. When you subtract one, it goes down one. Right. Yeah. So, so when when you you know you know x squared minus two x had has has two solutions um when x is zero and x is two yep and that's why if you put zero there on that third term it's just going to give you the the two roots zero and, and two yeah. because it, so, x for zero x for two is going to solve that for zero so so again that 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 zero if you is subtracted one from the equation it was minus one instead mm -hmm. it's going to drop it down mm -hmm. one more Line. But for the general okay. form, because the quadratic formula for ax squared minus bx minus zero here equals zero would be the general form, because that third term is just zero, then it's just telling you if you put zero into that formula, it's going to be zero. If you put two into that formula for x, it's going to be zero. So those are the two roots, so those are two solutions for that particular quadratic formula. And then yeah. you can actually prove that using the quadratic formula, which we're, we're going to derive, yeah. but... In yeah. just a moment. So, so type, let's, let's type that, for example, x squared minus 2x minus 3. We're going to drop it down, down 3. Here. So we, we pull the parabola down 3, and we see we have two solutions at, at 1 and 3. Right? 
So if instead we said we instead we said x squared minus two x plus one, when does that equal zero? Right? That's when you get the that's when it touches the x-axis. You get one. There, there's you, you the, the two. When you say instead of minus seven, you say plus one. Yeah, this just this is just giving me where the x-axis actually is. Put what do you want? Plus one on the x-axis. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so the there y, you right see there. you see that you actually you do have two solutions, but they're the same value. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. It's it's the same value of one. I I mean, I generally just say it's one solution because it it only intercepts really at one point. Although technically, I guess there are two solutions, but it's the same solution, one and one. I mean, but it only intercepts so, at the ordered point so, of one zero. So instead of you adding one, if you said x squared minus two x plus two, that's going to put it. You say up here. Where does where when is it when is x when is that function equal zero? We see that it doesn't cross the x-axis. Yeah. There's no solution. There's no solution in the reals. In the reals, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm assuming. Uh, I, I, and that, and this is, and this is one of the things that we're, again with my daughter's homework. I was like, I asked, I asked her. I said, "Look, are you are you assuming real analysis here? Are you assuming the reals? Because I didn't know if they had gone in the complex um, plane yet. And the, the and the reality is, the questions or the answers only make sense sometimes if you specifically note that it's in the real domain. If you're not noting that, then you might get a wrong answer because there might be a solution in the complex domain. But if you're not working in the complex domain, then the the answer is no solution. But it, it, that's what it kind of helps to know, you know, what domain are you working with? Because yes. the reality is, is there is a solution. It's just not in the reals. Yeah. So, so if, if I share, well, I'm pretty my, sure the solution. I haven't checked it yet. Let's see if, there's if I share my screen here, here's the solution. I'm going to look to they, they see it. Alpha. Uh, uh, yeah. The solution is one so, minus I one plus I. Yeah, so you yeah. see, you see this. So, so if you're seeing what I'm sharing here, um, you see this sort of this 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 script I. What is that script I? Well, that script I um, is corresponds to the square root of minus one. Oops, let me show your thing here one sec. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you got you got the same solution I got one minus I, one plus I. So those two so those two solutions are minus negative I and positive I. Yeah. So it, has a, it does have a solution. It's just in the complex. So how would you answer that though? If somebody said, "Look, what are the solutions here?" and you're you're like, "I'm well, I'm only dealing with the reals, and therefore there's no solution." Um, is that is that answer correct? In, well, as far as the saying, domain is, yeah, if, if but, you're trying to be pedantic, you would say there's no solution in the reals. Yeah, I think I think it's required. I, I think that you should put that in, right? So people know that you're talking. That you understand that there is a solution, it's just no. not in the R. And so, Oftentimes, if if the you know and the same thing, if you were dealing with the integers, and the result is square square root of two, there's no solution in the integers either, yes. even though there's a solution, right? The difference between there exists a way to solve the equation, and there's no solution. Yes, yep. that's those are they're very different, very different things, you know. X x divided by zero is no has has no value but but um x squared minus 2x plus 2 equals zero has no solution in the reals but it does have complex solutions correct yeah and, and now good i was gonna say that uh we might want to talk about complex next time i do want to keep this under 90 minutes we this went by fast dude yeah um let me just show you one other one other example of a of a I think of, of an interesting polynomial. If you can go back to to uh, graphing, yep. Okay. It or I can show I can show it on it on the on the Wikipedia page. What what's the um, yeah? It's, it's showing your screen right now. So what if you want to do? We can do both. What what what's the problem? Does it, does it show the Wikipedia page there? This this function. Uh, only degree five. Uh. I lost my wiki page. Where is it? Uh, okay, I'm on it. Poly, which which polynomial? Polynomial degree five. Let's look at the graph. Degree five. Where is this on the? Um, or or, or I could or I could share. Yeah, it's shared on yours. It's so uh, it's it's already sharing yours. Okay. Does it does it show? Does it? It it's showing the mathematical one, but I need to share. 
I need to share the yeah, um, yeah, whatever you're sharing. That's what it's going to show. Uh, I'm going to switch the window to showing here. To show that now. Uh, yes. Okay. So this is a polynomial degree five. So there are five potential solutions, only three of which are real. Here's degree five. So we have a one, two, three, four, five, five. Mm -hmm. A five wiggle function. Yeah, you can right? see three real and solutions there that are crossing here, the here, and here. three times. Correct. Um, but degree five, this is because there are actually, you know, there are actually, um, uh, you know, four, there's five solutions, two of which are complex. So if, if I go back to, uh, I'll go back to math, Mathematica um, here. So now you see Mathematica. And let's go down here and say solve get the square bracket. That thing equals zero for x. All right? There are there are here's your three solutions. In an R and then two in, in C. So there's five solutions. So minus total. four in a fraction. That's a real. More one, one and a half. That's real. A little less than three. That's real. And here are two things. Here are two complex values yeah, that are actually get really... into the same value. Yeah. So those, but those complex ones won't be crossing the x-axis. Axis. That's right. Yeah. The other three and, and will, we saw, are real. And 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 when we saw that, you know, when we came over to look at that function, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Here, go back to the function, right? Those are those three values. The two complex values have to be the same thing because it doesn't cross the x-axis. So, so you can have a polynomial that has both real and complex values. Yeah, and it's interesting. Those oh. complex values actually don't just necessarily get thrown away. They do have actual practical uses yes. in complex circuit analysis. And yeah. Electronic so in electrical circuits, yep. you oftentimes deal with, with complex circuits. You're dealing Absolutely. with a lot with, of complex, a lot of Capacitance circuits or other sort of phase circuits, that sort of thing. Capacitive it, reactance, reactance, frequency. Yeah. If if okay. this was some monetary function where you know price versus price versus uh, demand type curve, um, you would not be interested in a complex number of dollars. Yeah, because there's no real world application uses for. It. But if you're in physics, there is. There, there often are. So so when someone says. There's only three real solutions, um, and and they kind of go by that they kind of sloppy and they say there's only three solutions. Um, you know, they'd be wrong. Uh, it's five solutions. Yeah, but if you're dealing with in economics and and let's say it's in dollars and you don't want to deal with a square root of minus one dollars, um, you would just say there's only three monetary solutions. Well, our money is rather imaginary. It's fiat money. <laughs> so so Not um. By anything. It, um, I, I just, I just want to say as, as, as fun, as a fun thing, um, I'm going to show folks, you know, we, we had this thing about, about, um, um, the, the, and I think I, I sent you, where is it over here? Um, I'm going to show people that. Um, and we will we'll, we'll, we'll at some point do another thing talking about how you solve equations, right? Because there's a there there are, there are ways that you can take like a quadratic formula. You might have heard of that, right? Um, yeah. I and and that quadratic formula is something that um, that uh, is there. So so. Um, if we look at the quadratic formula, um, I think you actually had had a thing where we showed a really nice, elegant um, solution for how to solve the the quadratic formula. How, how to drive it? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but I, I don't know if we're gonna go. I don't want to go into the yeah. driving that. But but, say, too long. but we could later on talk about well how you how how do you how can you actually calculate? There, there, there are ways if you have a quadratic formula that you can try to figure out the, the solution. Yeah. Um, and we can look at that at, a, at, a, at another time. The same good, thing with these type or so. But it's interesting because when you start looking at some of the solutions for how do you solve a third degree and fourth degree 
polynomials, it gets to be quite complex. And generally the answer is let a computer do it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because it, it, I mean, it, it becomes unwieldy. Yeah. I mean, some of these terms when you, you know, they can take a large amount of space if you've got to like hand write, write them out. That's why even in physics, a lot of symbols are used to represent very long, complicated things. And you just stick them into one. So matter of fact, I think you've got one on your shirt, Laplace. Yes. Shirt, so. Same, same principle. Yeah, but if you look at, you know, I'm mean, sharing here, just to give you an example, um, I don't know if people can see this 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 formula. Recordic formula? Yeah, right. Here is... Who wants to you, write all if, that out all the time? That's like ridiculous. Yeah, if, if you're talking about, here's a here's a polynomial of, of fourth degree, right? And you say, well, given this polynomial of fourth degree, whatever the coefficients are, how do you solve it? And the answer is you get these really, really nasty, here are your four solutions that has these these formulas that are just horrid, right? Yeah. And nobody wants and, to hand work all that out. Yeah. So and by the way, it turns out when you try to go and do the same for a fifth degree polynomial, the general solution, you find there is no big the, there's there's no there's no finite size equation that solves a fifth degree or higher polynomial polynomial using expressions like this so right? you just you just sol <laughs> so that so for a fifth degree or higher there's really there's no way to write it in general form like this yeah the four general i mean this is, this is called galois theory right galois sort of proof theory, yeah that, that you you run out of you run out of stuff that that is i've touched on know, galois theory on this channel well we tried to touch on galois theory we didn't get really far we actually ended up uh, talking about matrix with um dr trainer was that her name yes yeah. um but but it is a case where again you know that 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 the that the notion of how you solve these things um, is 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 I mean there there are ways to solve physical polynomials don't get, don't get me wrong but if you're talking about a, a, just a general way of saying I want to just plug in the coefficients into some magic formula and and have it crank out like like this is you know, if you have a fourth degree polynomial equals zero and you want to know what x is these are the four roots is it, is it you... kind of similar why there's no general analytical way of solving for a three body problem for and yeah because because what you know what like i approved is that that um essentially you you um you know because because people try to you know, few, few people solve the quadratic and you can derive that they solve the the the, the cubic and the quartic, you know, in, in the quintic, ago. quintic is like, nope, never mind. <laughs> and kept looking for the thing, and essentially what they what they 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 found, and actually it was actually it's Abel. I'm sorry, let me correct myself. Abel was the one. He's got about a billion groups that showed for degree five solutions cannot be expressed by a finite formula using only arithmetic mm. and radicals. Yeah. So so we're talking about you know. This 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 is a finite formula using only arithmetic and and radicals. You have it to use more advanced mathematics to uh, represent it, those. it is really they're, 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 it's hairy, but but it's there. So if you if you had an x to the fifth in here, this expression would be infinite in size. Yeah. You never you wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. Now there are there are ways to solve those things and techniques. Um, some of the numerical solutions, other things that they're also special case stuff. And Galois theory and and lag group stuff, but I, I I apologize for yeah for the, no that's right it was it that's was able too. that proved first proved I think it was like in in 1824 if I recall correctly so apologize for for you can see we were doing this off the cuff of our heads it's 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 a uh, off the cuff of our head it's it's a it's a uh, we make mistakes sometimes <laughs> so, so I apologize for people screaming saying it was not Galois was able you know I, 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 well, I think this was fun still, though. Uh, it was much much later on a Sunday than, I, <laughs> than usual, that's for sure. Um, um, I, but, think was, I think, was, but, but you know, Abel was when they first did it. I think Galois did it later, where he said something like that that degree four or higher cannot be solved using bi radicals. Yeah, well, there's a lot of times, I mean, they, there's also techniques they use like analytical continuation they for like 
they yeah. working with uh, summations and telescopic functions and yeah. continuous, fun continuous, continuous functions, yeah. functions and, and numerical approximation. You can do solving stuff, but again, you just don't have a thing like the quadratic formula where you just yeah. plug in the coefficients and, and the Which two solutions Which would be nice, but out. yeah. And that's, and that's and one of those so things that's, that's why they developed the these other techniques. Gawa then showed essentially also explained sort of why with with their so, so um, um, that's sort of a, one of those, those things. Awesome. So um, we will do later on another thing when we visit stuff, we're not so tired. And and we will um, uh, talk about, you know, writing quadratic formula and then me, other things you can do with these, these functions. But we're going to sort of give you a general review of polynomials, graphing, uh, again, remember it's where they cross the x-axis. Sometimes interesting where it goes flat, which is the derivative when the derivative goes to zero. Inflection points are sometimes the interesting stuff. So when you're dealing with phenomenon, and a phenomenon is expressed as a polynomial, oftentimes some of the interesting phenomenon occurs when you solve for zero, or when you when you deal with with the with, where the derivative is zero. Is a local yeah, maximum. maybe next time we'll derive the quadratic. Like let uh, let Lemo says, it's it's pretty easy to do. It's it's just basically simplifying, completing the square, rearranging things of that nature. It's not not terribly difficult to derive the the quadratic formula. Although it's it's funny is most people never even probably will ever use a quadratic formula in their life. And and there's a lot of time, most of the time you don't even need to. I mean, there's other ways of solving things where you don't have to use the quadratic. The quadratic is a great way to check to make sure it works right. But um, most people just generally never utilize maths, but it's good to know. I mean, I think it's important that people kind of understand the concepts because if they understand these types of concepts, they can apply them to other types of maths that we do talk about. You know, I, I, I like ring theory. I think it's interesting. It's very complicated, but if you want to ever learn yeah. the intricacies of mathematics, then yeah, a lot of these complex. Yeah, because we'll, we'll go into start talking about some of these things of how to, how to solve yeah. How to solve these, yeah. these equations and so forth later on. Because right. there's some there's some good stuff here. Well thank anyway, you. Man. So, I appreciate so, it. Man. So sorry folks for for the errors we made. We fixed some of them. Some of them we probably didn't fix. And you know, that's that's we're human. That's how we so. roll, man. No, that's how we roll on a late Sunday, just top of our I didn't say well you try to go in and, and do that off the top of your head with without any you know how much we know and yeah, I mean, that's so, been a long time for I, me too, I, man. I mean, I'm I not sure why I, 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 I love because I forgot. I, I forgot with mathematically you're supposed to. The, the the operators have capitalized, not not lowercase. So that's why. Oh, yeah, right. I don't use this stuff at hardly at all, right? So I mean, I really have to work twice as hard to kind of recollect this stuff because I did have all these maths, obviously. But um, you know, I'm I'm digging the back of my head as we're going through this stuff, which I think is kind of you know. Fun. Um, it, it makes me pause and go, okay, what do I do remember about this? Because you, you, for, the, for the people that never had these types of maths, it's, it's all new to them. And people that have, it's just refresher. But either way, I hope something, somebody got something out of it. Yeah. And it's, it's a say, it is, it is um, it's interesting stuff. And, and it does, it does affect, um, it does affect the, uh, you know, the world that, that, that you live in. Um, you just may not understand how it affects. Yeah. All right. Um, well, hopefully, people will have some questions. I want to thank Landon, the uh, you know the awesomest mathematician dude I know, slash volcanologist, slash computer scientist, slash uh, uh, I don't know how many things you've got, <laughs> but you got a lot of slashes. Yeah. And you know, it's 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 again, it's 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 fun to look do some of these things and play around with it and and twist it. That's one thing I like about about. Um, you know, um, mathematics is you can you can put knobs in and start playing with with you can start playing with 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 functions and and try to start and try to see what these things do. It's really interesting uh, when you start getting into complex numbers and rotations and how they actually you can kind of think about it start, rotating around the x-axis and start plotting them, right? Plotting them, and, and, start, yeah. And frequencies when you get into like angular frequency of wave functions and you're getting to winding frequencies and you're getting into the, the Transform forms, like for example, going from the frequency domain to the um, time domain. Mm -hmm. uh, Laplace transformations and things of that nature. Um, very interesting stuff. Yeah. So, um, so it's it's all um, stuff to give you. Um, um, it can give you give you basically a a, a, a really way good way to sort of start getting handle and stuff. So you, it basically it it saves your um, 
it saves you from having to do all this 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 drudgery. Um, because again, once you kind of understand the, the mechanics of the thing, yeah. then we can just you know, go and so start doing. Yeah, know, I, got, I should learn Mathematica one of these days. I've used some, I've used similar. I mean, I have uh, the was it um, Deeper Office, and uh, that has a calc program in there similar. Uh, Deeper, you know, Libra Write, and you know, it's kind of similar to like LaTeX in a way. I, I need to learn like Mathematica. At least one of these. Days. I don't. Yeah. You know, or I don't know. I don't use use much more than Wolf of Mouth from. So. Anyways, I guess I guess I guess one or two people downvoted. Yeah, who downvotes math? Kimo was Mac asking. Yeah, I know. You can't win, dude. So give us some upvotes. No. Um, like here's a case where you plot 3D and you can see how how you know how, you, you know two variable stuff starts. Topology. Starts. Yeah. Yeah, you know what would be really interesting one of these days having a a hang on curvature. People mm. don't understand curvature very well, and I don't either. Because I mean, I mean, it's hard to imagine when you have things like a, a cylinder has no curve. Yeah, uh, you know, a, a, a donut donut has no curve; it only has a curve at the like the infinite point turn, internal circle of the of the donut. But when we're talking about curvature, this thing called uh, what was it the parallel transport? You, you determine. Whether something has actual curvature, so if you do parallel transport on a cur on a, on a cylinder like a toilet roll, roll or something, there's no curvature on that, believe it or not. But it's hard to picture that because you're looking at something like a cylinder. Go well, of course it's curved. Look at that. There's curvature. You're like, nope, not mathematics. That is not curved. Yeah. So those are the things I and, find and, interesting. Yeah, you know, and and I say as well, we can do some work when we talk about these things. If you look at what but currently I'm showing, you know, this they said like a quadratic formula. There are a number of things here that these points you, you see being plotted. You know, here is we talked about the two spots when it crosses the x axis, right? But also the cost when it crosses the y axis, and also when it has the local minimum, uh, the vertices. And, yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and these are formulas to be able to derive that sort of stuff. Um, those are all things, again, where if this is a phenomenon, um, those sometimes, those spots, times are, are, are really what you're trying to solve for when you're doing that. And again, if you're doing this in a practical real world, um, you need to know the theory. But when you're grinding it out, you let computers do the actual grinding. Because as you saw, Steve and I started you know, making, making mistakes when we're tired. It's easy to get it wrong and float it. It really so. is. And I'm really tired. I'm going to be going back to bed here soon. I got, I got to work tomorrow. So again, I apologize for the there, but I hope you got some general gist. Again, remember polynomial, poly, you know, many name things. It's a bunch of, of, of terms where you have a, you have constant coefficients times a variable to a non-negative integer power. Yep. That's a polynomial. And, and the, and the number, the highest one that, that's, that has a non-zero coefficient is the order of polynomial, and that will tell you how many terms there are. Some of those terms can be complex, or, or they can all be real. Or, and some of the terms can be mapped, can overlap, right? So just because you have a third order of polynomial, you won't, you won't get three unique solutions. They could actually all be, you know, two of them could be in the same spot, for example, uh, as we saw. Kimo asked for the judgment call. I think so. The problem is I work tomorrow, and... There might be um, a problem uh, on scheduling the call. I will get with uh, Cheshire tonight or tomorrow morning uh, and find out if we have to do it a little bit early. We're going to read comments, but there should be. Uh, also, uh, if you guys don't know, um, I have my GoFundMe for my lawsuit with Katie Joy Paulson. That's going to be active for several months, several, 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 several months. Um, yeah, and so. and so, so well, yeah, so do you check out uh, all the stuff links below. Um, uh, my, uh, my, my producer, uh, uh, who was cutting, you know, so recovering from COVID, he was about, about a week away from getting the vaccine and he had encountered a COVID denier, um, had recovered from COVID and best when he started getting recovery, he had, had appendicitis and had to have his appendix so he's, re he's recovering from it. I'll give him my best, <laughs> definitely, yeah. I, I've so, been avoiding so, COVID, it's, and, uh, yeah. Uh, I do I do recommend that, but say, so you understand, well, what happened to our favorite universe, uh, 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 you know, 
Discord channel, um, we are going to be doing a news thing. We're going to take stuff, news, and, and give a two-minute, three-minute thing about why is this science news entry. Not not political news. Plenty of people do this. This is about science news of, like, like why is it this fast-spinning? They found a really fast-spinning white dwarf. It's crazy. Um, this 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 white dwarf is is you know is spinning like once every twenty five seconds. Like the the, 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 the the edge of the black of the of the white dwarf is going like you know two thousand kilometers a second. It's just insane. Um, and and we're kind of puzzled as to why. And it's it's fun because the universe sometimes you you might think you understand the universe and put it in a nice little box and it pulls the surprise saying surprise. So so. So I'm not in the new stuff. I talk. I'll be talking about why is this interesting, right? Um, uh, and that's that's going to be the main thing for our favorite universe because it is a very favorite universe where these these old odd things crop up, um, fun discoveries and fun results. So that's that's coming. Um, producer will be uh, when they they he's, he's out of the hospital. His appendix has been um, deleted. He still has, his he still has a bibliography and a a a colon, um, but he doesn't have an appendix, right? And we're so also going to be doing he, he uh, left, left in his index, and he's he's now appendix free. And to let people know, uh, next month, which is not that far away, we're going to be doing a um, kind of a little um, story, I guess, on Chenyobo. At least the, the the what 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 we how we understand what happened in Chenyobo. Break it down. A lot of people have a lot of misconceptions of what actually happened with Chernobyl as far as the physics and the reactor. Um, so, Landon and I are going to yeah. do that on a, a uh, brand new DEFCON One Science. Yeah, and I'm going to be trying to pronounce Chernobyl correctly. Um, <laughs> or the, or, the, or, the, or the, the, the supervisors there that day was it Dimitri or something? It's <laughs> not. Yeah. So, I don't know. so, but 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 what we're going to do is not. We're not going to give you the Hollywood hype. We're not going to give you the, you know, the 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 story stuff. We're going to talk about the actual physics of what happened, and the and the and the reactor mistakes that were made. Because yeah. that 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 it's like the Titanic. There were many compounding errors. I and mean, it could have been completely they, avoidable. That's the funniest part. It's just, I mean, it was like they went out of their way to, to <laughs> yeah, between the bad it. design and the just incompetency. But anyways, we're going to wrap it up, Landon. Uh, thank you again. Thank you guys and for watching, so stay, guys. Stay tuned for yeah. our Chernobyl, Chernobyl um, uh, uh, event next month. And then we'll revisit this stuff and talking about uh, quadratic formula and some of those ways you handle. Yeah, if you've got some special things, let's comment, comment in the video and let us know if you want Landon and I to talk about a specific thing in math. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Sounds good? All right. All right. Good night, guys.